Hello viewers, I'm Simon Preston and welcome to Reggae Boys Commentary. Thank you very much for tuning in for yet another video. And as you can see by the title of this video, we're taking things from a slightly different angle. And what angle are we referring to today? Well, we're going to talk about a player that we've discussed on numerous occasions, but perhaps an update on the matter. You know, you guys have been asking this question on Reggae Boys commentary when we go live on Thursdays. So I figured why not have this as a topic of discussion for a separate video? And then from there, you guys can have your opinions, your thoughts on the matter. And you can all really decide, you know, if this is an individual that you think we should have for the national program and is not part of, say, an 11 at least part of a pool for the qualifiers, the Gold Cup. And let's let's be honest, the future, because we know what the situation is like in terms of injuries, suspensions, and other personal matters that can get into the way of players. So, Javon Anderson, what is the situation? Well, who is Javon Anderson? Who is he specifically? Well, Javan Anderson is a 25-year-old right back that currently plies his trade with Lazio in the Serie A in Italy. Javan Anderson was born in the capital city of the Netherlands, Amsterdam, to a Dutch mother and a Jamaican father and grandfather. So the paternal side of the family is Jamaican. So what does that mean? It means that he is eligible to represent Jamaica. 25 years of age, five feet, nine inches tall, actually started his career in 2014 when, when he was in the Ajax youth team thereabouts as a holding midfielder. But during his time at Bari, Lazio, that's when he got shifted over to the right back region. And to me, I think he looked quite decent as a holding midfielder, although he didn't have the physical stature, but still he was able to move the ball quite well. As a right back now at Lazio, he's only had a handful of, of appearances. In terms of in the league itself, in, in the Scudetto, he's only had eight appearances. He's had a couple in the Cups and those sorts of things and Europe as well, but only eight in terms of in the actual Serie A since joining the club in 2018. So that's the scenario where he's concerned. A former Dutch player as well, you know, he, he played for the Netherlands at the Under-17 European Championships in 2012, where the Netherlands won the title. So he has that winning mentality, you know, together he has that sort of zest, that zeal, that passion, that desire. So, you know, I think it's quite good from that perspective. The only concern you can say is that he's coming to the end of his contract. So he will have to make a massive decision. Do I stay at Lazio? Or do I move on? You know, I can say safely that Ajax love him. They love him because he's an academy player. He's an academy product. So we'll see what the summer will present for itself. But certainly heading back to the Eredivisie is, is up for consideration at the end of the season. Now, we've spoken about the clubs that he's played for. We've spoken about the position. We've spoken about different aspects so far. But what type of a right back is he? Well, Here's the thing. He defends very well. He covers ground quite well. He intercepts quite well. My concern for him as a right back is his attacking dividends. He can cross the ball quite well, but in terms of the trajectory and the quality of the crosses, that is what I'm quite concerned about. Instead of looking for a centre forward, oftentimes the ball might go to the, the opposition's goalkeeper or might end up to the opposition centre half's head. So for me, I still think that's an area of his game that is that needs to improve on. And perhaps that's the area that Alvis Powell has over him, because Alvis Powell is quite a tenacious and a adventurous going forward, you know and shows risk. So that is what Alvas Paul would have over him. But Javan Anderson, in terms of the defensive aspect of his game, has it. He has those elements together. And that should be viewed as something exciting. Now, we've spoken on Reggae Boy's commentary in the past about him starting the process to apply for the Jamaican passport. Well, I was able to obtain an email that Javan Anderson said to one of the JFF agents and he said this to one of our agents thank you very much for the message all is well and we are in contact and we're looking to provide the Jamaican passport now so English is not his first language so you know in terms of how he wrote the email 
That's essentially what Javon Anderson said. Now, when media houses contacted Dalton Wint, he said that Javon Anderson wasn't on the list. But Javon Anderson is saying that he's working on his passport. Now, he's working on it independently. It's not as if the GF have called him and said, hey, we would like to bring you into the national program such and such and such to get your passport ready. The conversation was more like, hi, Javan, how are you doing? You know, it's, we understand you have Jamaican heritage. You know, we'd love to, to meet to discuss, you know, future plans. That's essentially what the conversation has been like between Javan Anderson and the JFF. So as it relates to Javan specifically, he's gone out of his way and in his pocket to start the process for a Jamaican passport. Has he received the Jamaican passport yet? The answer to that question is no. He has not received the Jamaican passport. So that in itself is the, the deal with Javan Anderson. He started the process, but he has not received the Jamaican passport as yet. So that is the scenario, you know? That is the situation with Javan Anderson at this point in time. I know for some, we may view it as frustrating. Some may view it as progress for me. I look at it as a scenario where the process has started and it's not stalled. So for me, if it can be got, if the process can be expedited or a process where it can, which can get over the line, then we can start being a little bit more enthusiastic about him getting involved in the national setup. Who knows what will happen in the middle of World Cup qualifying? Let's not forget, when we're in the 2014 FIFA World Cup qualifiers, when they were in the final round, Daniel Gordon was far from our thoughts and minds. But the injury to Nairo Nasworthy prompted the introduction of Daniel Gordon into the team. Later, Wes Morgan. As we know, Wes Morgan went on to have a score of caps for Jamaica and went on to play at the Copa America and helped us to get to the final of the 2015 CONCACAF Gold Cup. Yeah, that's right. That's the scenario. And that's exactly what happened. So let's look at this positively and say the process has started. Javan is doing this by himself. And when he's ready, he will contact the JFF. Does he want to play for Jamaica? Yes. Does he qualify to play for Jamaica? Yes. Does the JFF have one eye on him? Yeah. So that is what we need to, that is what we should be quite pleased about at this point in time. So that's something that, you know, we should be quite happy about and, you know, be quietly optimistic about, you know. Yes, he does have roots on the, the Surinamese side of things because his mother's side, although born in the Netherlands, has Surinamese roots. So that is an option. But for this player in particular, right now as we speak, Jamaica is where his heart lies. Could that change in another six months? I don't think so. But the only way I think that Suriname could come into the picture is if Suriname goes to speak to him individually and promises him playing time. That's the only way I could see him being in a scenario where he would switch allegiance. But for right now, Jamaica is his priority, not Suriname and not the Netherlands. That is the situation right, right now as we speak for Javan Anderson. That is a situation right, right now, and we hope that it will remain that way because I think it's an individual that can add depth to the program. And we've speak and, spoken time and time again about the individuals, you know. We've spoken about what can happen in World Cup qualifying, what can happen in the Gold Cup. Listen, I've been on trips. I've been on, I've been in scenarios where I've you need to take four flights just to get to one destination. I know what that is like, and I can tell you for certain players it can be frustrating. You can have flight delays. You can miss your flights, and you know you sometimes a player, especially during the pandemic that we're living in, might not be able to travel due to different different reasons. So once you have that that pool together, it's 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 great. You know, like. When I was visiting my brother quite recently, he said something quite astute to me. He said, better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So better to have the players, 
part of the pool, have 60 players with a Jamaican passport and not necessarily need them right away, then be in a situation where you need them and not have the passport. I hope I hope that makes sense to to all of you. And that should be the essence. Javan Anderson wants to play for Jamaica, has started the process, but it's not finished. Reggae Boys fans, thank you very much for tuning in for another video on Reggae Boys commentary. Thank you very much for all your support to helping me to get over 8,000 subscribers. We're going for 10,000 subscribers by the Gold Cup. Help me as we get towards that target. Thank you, thank you very much for all your support. Don't forget to, to like this video, share it, and don't forget as well to subscribe to this YouTube channel, Reggae Boys Commentary. Take care, guys.